attenuation factor or ratio. That symbol there, the triangle with the in and out, is a t typical schematic symbol for some kind of for for an amplifier of some sort. Something that will provide gain. Gain is something. How many more times do we get? How, how much bigger is the output than what we're putting in? Yeah. So v v out over v in <coughs> would be the voltage gain of that amplifier if we, if it was a voltage amplifier. If V out is greater than um, is V out of a V in, sorry. So if the, if the V out divided by V in is less than one, we're not talking about a gain. We're talking about a loss or attenuation. So a negative, effectively a negative gain is attenuation. Okay. We equally we could calculate the power gain or the current gain of a circuit. So we don't just necessarily want, want to be interested in a voltage gain, although in what we're doing that is what we're going to deal with, okay? But we could be interested in a power gain and also current gain. Now, the, it just so happens that the um, calculator that you're going to use online requires your attenuation level you want your desired attenuation level to be entered in decibels power so there's some uh, there'll be a calculation to do to co to convert your voltage ratio into a value that is power in decibels so we'll we'll be doing that anyway show you what you need to do but it will require that that conversion from effectively a voltage ratio to a power ratio in decibels. More about that in a minute. So, in many cases, uh, we're now talking about measuring gain attenuation using the decibel or dB, little d, capital B scale. And you'll probably have seen that on noise meters and or amplifiers and various bits and pieces. Um, and wondered perhaps what it was, right? Well, in many cases, uh, gain or loss, the numbers involved are very large or very small. An amplifier can easily have a gain of 100,000 or more. Um, for convenience, it's better to use a scaleless logarithmic. Um, and therefore, if we use logs to the base 10, um, then the ratio is said to be in bells. A bell is quite a large unit in size, and so we more commonly use the unit of decibels, where one, where ten decibels is equal to one bell. For power ratio, the power ratio in dB is equal to <coughs> ten times the log of P out over P in. If you know the voltage or the current ratio, right, you can get the power ratio by substituting in for P out and P in. We know we can get the power from V out squared divided by Z out. So we substitute that in for P out, substitute in V in squared over Z in for P in and we can get the power ratio. And that's the formula you're going to need for your assignment to get your voltage ratio converted to power in decibels for the online calculator. Alright? You'll be given a specification that you've got to design an attenuator to take it down, an input down from 10 volts down to 5 volts or something like that, and that needs to have a characteristic impedance of 600 ohms You'll put those values in that formula, and that will give you your power or your your um, attenuation level in power dB. If you had the currents instead of the voltage, so you design the attenuator to attenuate to a particular current um, 
you'd use the i squared times z8 over i in squared times z8. Substitute that in to, the, to, to this formula to get a result. All of those are about you calculating what your attenuation level is in power to the dB scale. Yeah? Do you know what I mean by a log logarithmic scale? By the way, goes in if it's to the base ten. It's a scale if you are graphing, you're going multiples of times ten. So just briefly, if you have a logarithmic scale as your x-axis, and you will be when you do your filters, you'll be doing this for your frequency. If you've got divisions like that. If that's 10 hertz, that's 100 hertz, that's 1,000 hertz, that's 10,000 hertz, the next one will be 100,000, and so on. So every one is a multiple of 10. It's not linear. And you can have graphs that are suitable to go on log linear. That's where one scale is linear, the other is logarithmic. There are cases when you want a log log scale to your graph and then you buy it in you get graph paper in so many cycles that would be four cycle graph paper and the, your divisions don't go evenly they get smaller as you go towards the end so one will be there then two will be closer to one and that is to the start and so on I'm sure you've seen it but just unaware of what it is yeah okay so more about that when we get to the uh, get to the assignment. So if if you if you p out of a p in is one, okay. If you put that into the formula that we had on the previous page, p in decibels is equal to ten log. V out of V in. If you put that in your calculator, you'll see that you'll get a value of one of zero out. If your output is the same as your input, quite obviously your gain is nothing. Yep. That would that's how you, that would be the decibel level for a buffer curl, yep. Yeah? Where P out of a P in is greater than 1, i.e. 100, if you put that in your calculator, 10 times log of 100, you get 20. 20 dB. Yep. If you put, if P out is less than P in, i.e. if P out of a P in is 0 0.1, a number less than 1, you'll get a negative value of gain. Negative gain is attenuation. Yep. Effectively. Right? You're getting less out than you put in. That's what an attenuator does. It gives you less out than what you put in. And that's a desired action because you've decided you need to do it. Signal's too big. We need to attenuate it. So if you had an instrument that was giving you too much signal for an amplifier is causing distortion. You can put an attenuator between the two to reduce the signal a bit. Yep. Okay. If you want to talk decibels directly in as a as a current ratio in decibels or a voltage ratio in decibels, you can do so with the formula. 20 log I out of a I in, or the formula 20 log V out of a V in. Okay? So, what we're going to do is have a look at a problem. <coughs> See. Pressure sensor 
produces a signal of 0 to 20 volts across its rated pressure range, whatever that might be. Okay. When connected to a load impedance of 500 ohms. So that's telling you that that sensor's got an, I, an output impedance of 500 ohms. Ideally, we should connect that to something that's got 500 ohm impedance if we want to transfer maximum power. You need to connect it to an instrument requiring an input voltage between 0 and 10 volts into an input impedance of 500 ohms. So we're looking for a symmetrical attenuator. It's got a characteristic impedance of 500, above the sign. Okay. That can be done with a passive attenuator. No amplification, that means made from simple resistors, like we've been talking about. Calculating those component values. First of all, we're going to look at how we do these calculations by hand, and then we'll have a look and see what the online calculator says. And um, going to sort of do a little bit of what you're <coughs> going to do for the your actual practical, but not all of it. Okay. Um, we're going to have a look at the hand calculations first. First thing we need to do is find what's called the attenuation factor, N. We can get that from in three ways, depending on what we've been given. We can either get it from V in over V out, I in over I out, or the root of P in over P out. You've been given V in and V out, so you're going to get it from that. I'll just pause the video, calculate it again. You can then, once you know N, you can find the um, values of Z1, that should read Z1 and Z3, because because it's um, symmetrical, those two resistors will be the same value, and then Z2 using that formula. So have a go now and see if you can get values um, for those particular components. What we got then? N is V in over V out. 20 over 10. So the attenuation factor is 2. So we put the values in here. That's 500 in it. 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 1. What we got there? 166. Point seven ohms. <coughs> and this one is going to be. 500, 2 times 2, over 2 squared, minus 1. 666.7 ohms. So the nearest ohm was really plenty good enough, because the preferred values are going to take you away from that when you build the circuit anyway. And... The mathematicians in you really ought to be describing those as 166 and a third, and 666 and two thirds, and 666 and two thirds. Yep. Well, anyway. Like yeah. If you if if that was really important, you'd put a trimmer in. Yeah. Yeah. Which, if you senses where you have to set up things, top and bottom end. Is probably what you're doing to a certain extent, but you find that as you adjust what's called minimum maximum pots, they both affect each other. So you'll 
you're, you're gradually, you're going up and down on both of them, backwards and forwards, until you get the thing balanced. Because when you, you change one value, it's going to affect the other value and so on. You can imagine that happening here, but eventually you get to a point where you get it as good as you can. It's only ever, in reality, going to be as good as you, as good as you can. It's never going to be spot on. Um, and anyway, when I eat up, it's going to change. Yeah. So to a certain extent, depending on how hot it gets. All right. Yeah. All happy with that? Okay. Have a go on the next page. Um, is similar methods for determining the values for a pie design. So have a go at them. Right, gents, what we got then? N is the same, because that's still um, 20 over 10. So this is going to be 500 times uh, 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1. What value do we get there? Fifteen hundred ohms. Is that the Z1? Yeah, Z one and Z three. Fifteen hundred ohms. So like as I reliably said, this attenuator is going to do exactly the same job but the component values aren't the same. Um, you can get a fifteen hundred ohm resistor spot on though. That's a value that you can get, so that might be an advantage. This is five hundred times 2 squared minus 1 over 2 times 2 equals what do you get for that one? 375 ohms I think 370 is a preferred value in Five and um, five percent, is it, Lewis? You probably know better than me. Three thirty, there is anyway. I I never have remembered them because I don't use. I've never used them regularly enough to um, to, to come. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh yeah, but no, but you can put parallel and series combination in to get it closer. Yeah, you could do. Yeah.